You know what sound that is, folks. You betcha. We're back for another noon whistle. It's <laughs> Tuesday. I'm Chris Trottier. And I'm John Anzalone. And today we have our, as our guest, Nate Hansen, 2003 graduate of Elkhorn Area School District. Uh, thanks for coming, Nate. Also the owner of Hansen Screen Printing. Thank you <clears> for <throat> having me. Yeah, we appreciate it. We listen in once in a while, and it's a, it's great to have you as a guest, not just a listener. And um, yeah, tell everybody what you got going and have a little conversation. So appreciate your time. Yeah. Um, so I've owned Hanson Screen Printing since 2019, but I've been printing since, I'd say, 2001 off and on as a hobby. Um, I learned in high school. It was, a, it was a class in art with Al Larson. And ever since then, it was always kind of something that I enjoyed doing for um, friends or just as a hobby. I didn't realize that the school was doing that in 2003 and before. Yeah, they, I, th I think shortly after me, they, they stopped doing that. But <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, not only for my benefit, but I'm trying for the, for the kids and for curriculum, I'm trying to donate a bunch of equipment either to the middle school or the high school so they can, so I can pick kids out and yeah. bring them in here to work. So That's great. So, so Nate, tell us how you, you know, we were talking before the show as we do our kind of noon whistle prep, which unfortunately sometimes is better than the show. I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, how'd you get into the business? What's your, you know, you graduated 2003. Tell us about your journey as an employee working concrete and getting into this business. Yeah, I did. Um, so a week out of high school, I started doing uh, masonry. I went right into the trades. Um, mainly because I wasn't the best student and that wasn't, um, that was mainly on my end. Cause I'm not, I don't sit, I don't like to sit down for eight hours and, and look at a book and read. Um, I excelled in art, I excelled in television, video production stuff, but if I wasn't interested in it, I didn't want anything to do with it. Um, so I went to the trades. I did masonry for 16, 17 years, um, through the union, um, drove around a lot and went to Chicago, Madison, Milwaukee. I've been all over the state doing that, but uh, I decided uh, I didn't want to break my body any longer. So <laughs> I decided to put a pause on that career choice for a while. And um, I want to be 45, 50 years old and be able to walk. So what, yeah. what type of work were you doing in the trade? You said concrete. Was it like flat work? Was it walls? Was it, what were you doing? Masonry? I was doing masonry, so brick, block, stone, um, a lot of elevator, a lot of heavy lifting. So I was a mason tender, so that just uh, you you carry this and you set it over here, and then you carry this and you bring it over here. It was and a the mud, yeah. mud's too wet, mud's too dry. Yeah, not just yeah, dry. yeah. I I learned really quick um, what a good a good work ethic meant. Because if you didn't have that, you did not have a job. Um, so looking back at school, Nate, do you, you know, I mean, myself included, like you think, oh, I didn't really apply too. myself as much as I wanted to. Do you think that same way? If you could, if you could revisit high school again, what would, was there anything you'd change? That's a pretty good question. Um, I guess it would all depend on what my future looked like at that time. Um, I guess, what would you tell kids out there that don't see maybe a connection between high school and life? Oh, then I would, I would definitely um, to use the opportunity that's given in front of you. I mean, this, this youth apprentice program is awesome that Elkhorn has. And school isn't for everybody. Um, two of my daughters that just graduated, Brooke tried school. She didn't like it. She, now she's doing her own thing. Um, Taylor, she doesn't want anything to do do a school. She, she's doing whatever. As long as you have a work ethic and you're okay of okay with failing and getting back on a horse and trying something new, um, you know, you could be 50 years old and and decide that you're you don't want to do what you're doing right now and do a career change. So, um, being a high school kid at 17, 18 years old and having to to choose what I want to do for the rest of my life. That's not really an answer that is easy for anybody, I think. Sure. So yep. you're right. I guess, I, think have, that's common. I guess you have to balance um, 
how much debt do I want to be in in five years versus how much money could I make uh, in five years? So, yeah. For and what do you want to do? Hey, right. Hey, you've had youth apprentices the last couple of years. I mean, I, I'm assuming they were your your kids. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so what kind of it, it, you, you mentioned before the show that you're looking for another youth apprentice through the Department of Workforce Development. What what do you you know, what do those kids do? Um, and what, what, you know, how, how can we help you find those kids? What, what would engage them? Um, I'm looking for a kid that isn't afraid to get their hands dirty. Um, and I guess what, what that means is just, uh, here's a task. This is how, this is what you, these are the steps you need to take to get from, from A to B to C to D and then your final product. Um, it's a lot of production stuff that I'm looking for, but it's, there's a lot involved. There's mechanic stuff involved. We have an automatic press. Uh, we've got manual presses that all need maintenance. So it's greasing equipment. It's just, um, it's a lot of maintenance, but then it's also teaching them how to print and how to print the right way to do it. Um, yeah. So that's a great opportunity for kids and, and for everybody who doesn't know about that. Yeah. We Elkhorn's got a strong tradition in utilizing that program and we have youth apprentices all over the County and manufacturing, we have them obviously at Hanson's Printing. We have them in accounting, marketing. So, you know, please reach out and, and let us know if you're interested. So, if, if you have a student or your child is interested, um, so what? So, what are some things you're doing right now? What are some businesses you're working for? What's what's kind of your niche that sets you apart from other printing companies, Nate? Um, I try to, I guess, to answer that question. I would consider myself more of a, a building relationships versus um, putting, pushing product. Um, I've got a lot of good relationships with breweries, coffee shops, um, stuff like that in the area, surrounding area, Burlington, Delavan, uh, public library in Delavan. Um, you know, it's a lot of relationship building, making sure the customers are getting what they want. Um, it's important to set up an appointment to come in so you can they can actually feel the garment. So they can see what what process we're going to use, whether it's a water-based ink, plastisol ink, discharge ink. It's there's a lot involved, and it's not just throwing a gilded T-shirt out the door and saying, "Here you go, this is what you're getting." It's really breaking down um, from start to finish, giving the customer exactly what they want. Well, that um, kind of leads me into Nate. Like you're a community guy. Like we've had a lot of conversations about community, and I think the relationship thing. Yeah, leads into like you care about community and you care about the community you're in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my wife has a business too. She's a chiropractor here in in town. So, um, yeah, both of us having businesses, it's it's good. It's has its challenges at times, but but that's not um, always usual. Like sometimes people take a place to do business, they don't become a business within the community. I guess is. Maybe the way to look at it that I'm here, I do my thing, but I'm not real interested in in what's going on or what the communities look like looks like or yeah, how involved it is. And I think, you know, you've expressed like that's important to you. Yeah, I feel like um, especially Alcorn, it's right now it might be a little bit difficult for a business to maybe open up or operate. Um Downtown, there's a lot of stuff that can change. It's, um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to find the the right words to to not what offend think, or what, whatever. But I guess look, if you look at Burlington, you look at Delavan, you look at East Troy, you look at all these communities around us. Like, how do we how do we re revitalize the community that we not only work in but also have our businesses in, and also something for our, our kids to do or have a job at or um, let's get people walking around again and shopping and how do we do that? And I don't really know if I have that answer, but um, yeah. And I think we all want our communities to, to thrive, right. And to be places where they're destinations for people to go and look and shop and, and buy. And yeah, I think the more people that feel that way, the better off you are, the more opportunity you have to make that happen. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think you mentioned a couple towns, Burlington, East Troy, Delavan. What what have you seen as you've been visited those towns that are 
that you've that you've seen that are really appealing to draw people in? Um, I feel like there's there's a lot of there's a lot more re, there there there's less service industry. There's more um, more retail. There's more. Um, more places to, to, to go and, and do something with your family versus having an appointment to go somewhere and you go get your whatever whatever appointment your tax is done, your your law firm and then you leave and then you leave the city limits. You know what I mean? Sure. I feel like there's a lot more um, more of that stuff. And I see in Elkhorn there are there are some that are popping up, but I feel like it's a lot more service driven. Tattoo I think it takes salons. people get involved, like you and others, to go. You know, a lot of us talk about it, but how many of us do something about it or engage in a group or, yeah, mm -hmm. committees or things like that or whatever to go? You know what? I want to help. I just don't want to talk about it. I want to help. Yeah, and, and for me, my ideal spot would be like a downtown spot. I would like to do production stuff out the back end or basement or wherever and then also have a retail space up front not just for Elkhorn stuff but um because I don't really have the space for that here I'm I'm pretty crammed but um but just to have have other um other stuff on consignment or you know kind of make it make it something for the for the youth to come in and, and have a four to eight job or you know I don't know. I don't really. I don't really have that answer. But but you're thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm always. I'm always thinking yeah. about everything. We need people. You know, so, some days it. I'm thinking about burning this place to the ground. But uh, don't do <laughs> you that. You know, it's it's. Uh, we can't edit we're... this. So don't stop. Don't like stop. <laughs> oh, I used to call my insurance company and tell them yeah. that wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> that um, was a joke. That was a joke. Yeah. No, but you know, some days are better than others. A lot of times it's um, last minute last minute customers that don't have artwork that's a big thing um you know and and a small local business in a community like this i've got a sign behind my desk that says we are not amazon i feel like there's a lot of people that expect like so i can get this in a couple of days right it's like well it's gonna <laughs> take three or four to get for your stuff to get here and i've got a week and a half two weeks of stuff already on the calendar um and the artwork you sent me is a like, uh picture of a drawing that hand drawn something you know it, it takes time to get something like that onto a screen and onto a computer and you know onto a t-shirt so or hat for instance if you're doing embroidery but um saying that there's, you remind a, there's me a lot more involved you remind me of the t-shirt shops up in the dells right where it's a bunch of blank shirts and you go in and pick number e73 off the wall and say i want it on this shirt <laughs> i mean that's that's fine if <laughs> If you want to go home, wash it three times and have it have it fall off because sure, right. uh, because a lot of times it's an eight dollar t shirt that's heat pressed with a cheap vinyl that it, it is going to fall off and it's going to right. crack and it's I guess <clears throat> you know for me it's finding the right process and the right application for whatever job they want so yeah. it's it's time consuming and it it's a lot of relationship building because it's well we could do A or B. Yeah. A is better than B because of these sure. reasons. Um, and I think that's what sets, you know, for me, the, the continued growth or helps helps me set that bar for myself and the employees because they know what they're going to get. And it's not, um, I want 100 shirts. I don't care what it is, which I yeah. get a lot of customers like that. But I need a little bit more information and I want to make sure they're getting what they want. Well, boy, time flies, gentlemen, when you're having a great conversation. A uh, little shout out here to Darcy Henriot, who liked liked us from Facebook. And before we wind down, any of you Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn followers, if you got any questions for Nate, please post those in the comments. And we are going to go to our uh, closing segment, which is shout outs and thank you. Uh, John, you want to start us off? We'll go counterclockwise. I'm gonna go with a, I'm gonna call it a mention today. Not really a shout out, but a mention. It could be a shout out. And I just want people to know that when uh, Annie's Burger Town had their fire, Nate jumped in quickly and swiftly 
and uh, started a fundraiser that was absolutely huge um, with people purchasing shirts to help support uh, the Helpins and Annie's Burger Town. So congrats to you. Um, great job, Nate. Yeah, yeah thank you. I, I want to thank um, my daughter, Taylor, who was working there and here. Um, and Haley, she was also working there too, but, and all the, all the staff at Annie's because it was nice. I set the job up and I left, I didn't do any of it. So they all printed all the shirts. They get all the credit. All I did was just give a, give a platform for people to donate. And I think it was over $10,000 that we were able to, to give to Jeff and Maria to help with whatever they need help with. I don't that's care. The beauty of our community though. Like that's it. That's community. Yeah. Yeah. I do have more. I do have any shirts still here. So if you haven't picked it up, please come and pick it up and get it out of here because I don't have space. So, a little comment from Darcy. We appreciate the comments, and uh, I'm I'm going to thank John Handel. I'm going to thank Co Coach Handel. Uh, we're in the throes of August, and sports are starting, and you got people coming into town, and I happen to be. Uh, watching uh, a big uh, youth football game with my son, a nine-year-old, and guess who's always at the facility? John Handel, supervising on a Saturday till 4.30. It's a great position. It's a thankless position, um, but I just want to thank him for all his time and dedication to creating those extracurricular opportunities. So, John, Nate, any part, any closing words before we close the showdown and pull the, pull the hammer for the whistle here? Thanks, I don't think I, I I had a slogan, but I, I guess it was already trademarked from last week. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I would encourage you never to follow that because that was about as good as you're ever going to hear. And for those of you who are wondering what we're talking about, please go back and watch our last week's show. And uh, David Redford chime in. Look at that. Thank you. Plus, David. By the way, all right, you, David. He is a youth apprentice over at Precision Plus in marketing. So thank you, David, for shout for the shout out. He was also on a a panel at a Wisconsin Manufacturing Commerce Foundation um, uh, uh, conference down in uh, down in, in Lake Geneva this June. So, Nate, thanks for all you do. Thanks for your advocacy there, for the for the community. Thanks to all our guests. Can I do a on. shout out too? Sorry. Yeah. yeah go uh, ahead. Jess, keep it going. Uh, Jessica Haggerty for uh, I don't Ooh. know if you guys saw that. We did. Uh, power, yeah, I, we I did. print for some powerlifting um, here in Elkhorn, and uh, I think she's world champion, right? She, she is. is a world champion. Yeah. So yeah. Amazing. Congrats. John, what are you benching? Go ahead, right sir. Now? I think it's time to go. All Tell right. Me. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. On that note, thanks, Nate. Everybody have a good Thank day. You. And here we and uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. All right. See everybody. Thank thanks. you.